As we saw earlier, Matthew copied the testimony of Mark almost verbatim, so we know Matthew was not an eyewitness. Does Matthew alter any of Mark's testimony, and if so, for what reason? Mark claimed Jesus was unable to do big miracles in his hometown because people didn't believe in him. Now, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. Matthew altered Mark's version so that Jesus only chose not to do great miracles instead of being unable to do them. Now, he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. It seems Matthew was not very happy with a Jesus whose powers were in any way limited. Mark tells us that Jesus needed to try twice before being able to heal a blind man and that Jesus had to spit into the man's eyes in order to get the job done. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit into his eyes and put his hands on him, he asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. So the first attempt brought him a fuzzy vision, but not quite clear. Time for one more laying on of hands. Then he put his hands on his eyes again and made him look up and he was restored and saw everyone clearly. Matthew alters this by removing the second attempt and the spitting and having Jesus heal not one, but two blind men. And when he had come into the house, the blind men came to him and Jesus said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes saying, According to your faith, let it be to you. None of that spitting and trying twice for Matthew. And just to drive home the point, Matthew includes another blind man healing in the 20th chapter. Jesus also hacks up a good bit of phlegm and uses magic words in another healing in Mark. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers in his ears. And he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Immediately his ears were opened and the impediment of his tongue was loosed. And he spoke plainly. Matthew will not have any of this spitting in magic words. He deletes this miracle altogether and instead writes a generic summary with multiple miracles. Then great multitudes came to him, having with them the lame, blind, mute, maimed, and many others, and they laid them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. In Mark, Jesus places a curse on a fig tree, but it takes all night for the curse to take effect. In the morning, as they went along, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Matthew, if our theory is correct, will improve Jesus' power by making the fig tree wither instantly as they watch. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How did the fig tree wither so quickly? They asked. Now, how did I know that would happen? It seems that good old Matthew knew better about what happened than Mark did, even though Matthew was copying Mark's testimony. Here's another example of Matthew improving Mark's Jesus. Mark has Jesus telling his disciples about the time frame of his second coming. Jesus tells his disciples explicitly that he does not know when he will return. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. But a Jesus who doesn't know when he's coming back is a problem for Matthew. So. Matthew makes a sly editorial deletion. See if you can spot it. 
But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Matthew copied verbatim Mark's verse, but removed the words, nor the Son. I wonder why. Matthew also seems to tone down Jesus' emotions at times. In Mark, Jesus actually gets angry with a man for asking him to heal him. And Jesus, moved with anger, put forth his hand and touched him, and saith unto him, I will, be thou clean. Matthew solves the whole problem by removing the part about Jesus getting angry. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will, be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. We can be fairly sure that Matthew's copy of Mark had the anger part in there, because it's highly unlikely Matthew would delete the part about Jesus showing compassion to the man had it been in Matthew's copy. Further support that moved with anger was the original wording in Mark. We can see Jesus getting angry again in the third chapter of Mark. And when he had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, he said to the man, stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other. And sure enough, Matthew's parallel of this scene doesn't contain the part of Jesus looking around at them with anger. These are not the actions of someone who is being truthful and honest. These are the actions of someone with bias who is willing to alter someone else's testimony in order to further his cause, which is also known as tampering with the evidence. More examples of Matthew's untruthfulness could be cited, but need we? X marks the spot and we proceed. Finding a direct contradiction between two different statements inside of Matthew fails, so we'll leave that box empty. So it seems Matthew is also a very unreliable witness. His knowledge of Hebrew was very limited, having to instead rely upon a faulty Greek translation of the Hebrew, which of course is what caused many of his errors. He also shows extreme bias and a willingness to significantly alter the testimony of the very witness whose words he copied almost in their entirety and verbatim for the most part. He synthesizes prophecy fulfillments by jerking Old Testament passages completely out of context and misinterpreting them. He has no first-hand knowledge of the events. His identity is unknown. In any court, this witness would be tossed out on his ear immediately. Perhaps our next witness will fare a little better.